Welcome to this talk about WebXR and what it means for the future of the web. Uh, my name is Jaume Sanchez. I work as a UX UI engineer doing visualization at DeepMind. I've been coding on the web for many years using WebGL, WebVR, and now WebXR, both professionally and as a hobby, doing creative coding. I'd like to thank GitHub Universe for the opportunity to talk about WebXR, its state, and its exciting future. So what is WebXR? Uh, simply put, is a JavaScript API to use XR devices. Cool, but what does that mean? Uh, it's a way for web pages to access an XR device's inputs and outputs. XR is a term that covers VR, virtual reality, AR, augmented reality, and MR, mixed reality, with the X being the thing, the unknown, the variable in the equation. It's also usually referred as extended. Hardware that enables XR applications is now broadly available to consumers offering an immersive computing platform with new opportunities and challenges. WebXR allows any web developer to explore these opportunities and challenges from the web. So, as many talks about the future, there has to be a recap of history to understand how we got here and how it shapes the way it progresses. But I'll be very quick because everything that led us here can be forgotten and started anew. Basically, it started with adding browser support to the Oculus DK1, which was a rotational controller-less HMD, which means it wouldn't track your position or have ways to interact. Uh, that experiment became really interesting and powerful and a great stepping stone for bringing VR to the web. As new headsets came, the, the Cardboard, Gear VR, Vive, Go, it became obvious that web VR wasn't well conditioned to evolve with quickly changing hardware, with new patterns and developers' expectations. So WebVR 1.1 shipped in some browsers, got deprecated, uh, and removed in some engines. It was time to do something better with the lessons learned. This new thing is uh, WebXR. It's a new API that fully replaces uh, WebVR. It came to me after listening to developer feedback, all the confusing or inefficient parts, the pain points while developing, uh, iterating on emerging best practices and patterns, so it's now more flexible and feature-proof. It maps better to XR hardware, the new patterns to the users and developers' expectations like uh, low latency and high refresh rate. It provides improved support for input and output. We now know more about the devices, which greatly simplifies rendering to them. Enables a unified input model with standardized uh, layouts for buttons, triggers, touchpads. Uh, and for instance, we can now get 3D models of the controllers from a content delivery network. No need to host them or keep up with them. It also brings a better understanding of the user space uh, to know if we are dealing with cardboard that can only rotate or Vive that can move around inside the boundaries of a guardian or an air experience that can move freely all over the world. It also provides performance improvements, mostly supported by the backends, uh, like faster and better rendering or video decoding. Um, and it enables a shared code path for multiple outputs. Uh, the code for inline, magic window, AR, VR, app doesn't require much branching now, which greatly simplifies development. WebXR is under the Immersive Web Working Group, which is a W3C group. This is important because it means there is a roadmap, so the implementation won't be changing under your feet. WebVR was a bit more loose on its approach of trying things and see if they worked and were adopted. WebXR is an independently designed standard with lots of similarities to OpenXR because they try to tackle the same problems and similar landscape. So there's a mutually beneficial feedback loop between both APIs, but it's not like OpenGL and WebGL. The API is different, but most backend implementations follow the OpenXR spec. Being a working group with a spec means that new features can be supported fairly quickly because there's no need to figure out anything or reverse engineer. It improves on the early adopter nature of WebVR, and it's backed by the industry. Uh, we have Google, Mozilla, Oculus, Microsoft, Unity, and many others behind. All the activity of this group happens in GitHub, so you can go and check it and contribute. So what is WebXR for users? Um, it means that you can enjoy VR and AR content the same way you consume any other content. Can you imagine a web without embedded video players? That, there was a time when that was also experimental. So practically speaking, it means that a web page can offer the option to go into VR or AR, track controllers if they are required with the security of the browser sandbox, 
no download and installation of apps with EV permissions, just hop on virtual environments without leaving the browser. Pages can go from flat to surrounding worlds in an instant. Experiences can go from amazing 360 video, which are still massively popular with cargo users, to furniture browsing, chemistry analysis, games, anything you can imagine. So for instance, Mozilla Hubs is a VR chat room and open source project that explores how communication in mixed reality can come to life. And lots of interesting and weird things are happening in this virtual space. For developers, it means being able to develop XR sites and apps with the same workflow as any other web development. The libraries and frameworks you're familiar with, the same simple and affordable cross-platform development environment. You will need WebGL, JavaScript, and some DOM to begin with, but all the web tech can be used. WebAssembly, WebRTC. For instance, in the image, MakePad uses Rust to create a collaborative shader editor, which you can also check on GitHub. Your app can benefit from instant delivery and updates with a huge reach of the web, with improved security because it requires HTTPS, no apps to download or install, no store. So what does WebXR provide? So through the API, the page can connect to an XR device, which could be something like a Daydream headset or a Oculus Go, if the user allows it to use, and then leads its capabilities. With an XR session started on that device, it can keep querying the pose and send images to the device output. If the experience requires controllers and there are any available, it's for instance, like this clicker or the Oculus controller, it also provides access to the pose and inputs like trigger buttons, touchpads of all controllers, and even access to the actuators, which can provide haptic feedback. So in practice, this is achieved via multiple modular parts. The parts that are actually currently available to everyone are the WebXR device API is the one that actually provides access to inputs and outputs capabilities of an XR device. The content rendered to the devices is provided via WebGL. The GamePads module allows interacting with the buttons, triggers, thumbsticks, and touchpads of an XR input device. The AR module works the same as the immersive VR content, but it guarantees that the user's environment will be visible and aligned with the rendered content. This may be achieved with uh, see-through displays like the HoloLens or the Magic Leap, or video pass-through systems like ARCore or ARKey, which is basically your phone. The heat test module provides information about the real world and a method for developers to heat test against it. It becomes very important for really immersive AR applications so things can be grounded on the world. The DOM overlays API provides a way to show DOM content such as text and input elements for an immersive AR session. This content is displayed as a transparent background layer superimposed on the real world scene and the rendered WebGL content. It's very useful to quickly build interactive AR apps. There are more modules in different stages of design, implementation, and support, and I'll talk a bit more about them later. So what can we build? It's about supporting the immersive web, web in a responsive way. VR, AR, inline in a regular page, all cases can be supported. You can still apply the principle of progressive enhancement to XR. So building the immersive web can mean experiencing virtual worlds through the browser, uh, virtual content seamlessly integrated in your browsing experience, limitless possibilities through a web platform. It's really all about the future. So how does one get to build the immersive web? You can, of course, just use WebGL and JavaScript and grind through. And, but fortunately, there are several JavaScript frameworks that support many WebXR features and have a very active community of developers and adopters. In alphabetical order, there's A-Frame, a web framework for building 3D, AR, and VR experiences declaratively with HTML and an entity component system. Babylon.js with loads of tools and a great IDE. Play Canvas is another great WebGL engine with ID and WebXR support. And 3GS, very widely used, has plenty of documentation and examples. It also has a very active community to bridge with other frameworks, like 3 React or Svelte 3. The four of them are on GitHub. You can check their progress and contribute anytime. If you're not a web dev, there are still options to build content for the web and use the power of WebXR. Like some options are Facebook photos and videos with React 360 which allows to create exciting 360 and VR experiences using React. 
Google Model Viewer, it's a custom element that you can use to easily display interactive 3D models on the web, and they are also on GitHub. Sketchfab is a platform to publish, share, discover, buy and sell 3D, VR and AR content. It has an amazing team behind it, and they are developing great tech. Sumerian is a new platform for developers to build and host VR, AR and 3D apps quickly and with minimal coding. In Unity, one of the most well-known cross-platform game engines, uh, there's an exporter by Mozilla Reality and other exporters are being developed. And finally, Verge3D is a toolkit for Blender, 3ds Max, or Maya to create immersive web-based experiences. But if you go the way of building yourself, uh, you have to choose a framework, and depending on your framework of choice, you get support for different key features for XR. This is a general thing with VR and AR. It's not related directly to XR, but when looking at a framework or engine, it's important to look for things like locomotion. Uh, we've learned a lot since uh, headsets first allowed us to move. High refresh rates have helped with motion sickness, and lots of testing and research have helped improve our patterns for moving around. But we still need to choose or implement a locomotion mechanic for our experiences. Uh, in the same vein, physics lie at the core of many immersive experiences uh, because we can believe non-realistic things behaving in a physically correct way better than realistic looking things behaving unrealistically. Related to that, animation with things like bone animation, skinning, rigging, all are very useful to make things more lifelike. And heat testing, the ability to touch and interact with the world in VR is relatively straightforward since the scene is all under the experience control because it's created by it. With AR or MR, it's slightly more complicated because information from the real world needs to be fed and processed. There's something related coming up, more on that later. Some more things to consider. Uh, hand tracking, for instance, this has been a recent development in the Oculus Quest, and there's a module for that behind the flag. Uh, to be able to use hands with no hardware. The system recognizes hands and fingers, and they can be used to interact with the scene. Uh, once enabled, you get the joints of the different parts of the hand, but the actual rendering of the hand is left to the experience. So you need something that can load the appropriate model and do some bone animation to distort it. Also related input models, as mentioned, there's a repository of controller models that can be used via content delivery network, so you can draw them accurately instead of drawing a generic controller or a box improving the immersion. And finally, things like text rendering. It would be ideal to have something like CSS and DOM. The layers module that is also coming soon will help with this, but anyway you want to render text, you will need some support for fonts, layout, crisp rendering. So talking about support, uh, basically for VR, you have Android uh, with Cardboard Daydream uh, through Chrome. You've got some Samsung phones with the Android Samsung Internet Browser um, and Android Firefox with the Polyfill. The Polyfill is a JavaScript implementation of the WebXR device API, as well as the WebXR Gamepad module. It allows uh, developers to write against the latest specification, providing support when run on browsers that implement the WebVR 1.1 spec or on mobile devices with no WebVR or WebXR support at all. For iOS, uh, you can use the Mozilla WebXR Viewer, which is, is basically a WebXR content render. It's not a full-fledged browser. Or Safari with the polyfill. In a standalone headsets like the Oculus, you can use the Oculus Browser or Firefox Reality, which is a browser from Mozilla that is designed for browsing the open web in virtual reality. And for Windows, you can use Chrome and Edge. There's not many VR options right now for macOS or Linux. Regarding AR or MR, the Android phones with AR Core and Chrome, or Samsung phones with Samsung Internet Browser, and for the standalone with uh, Magic Leap with the Helio or ExoKit or Firefox Reality, and the HoloLens 2 with the Mixed Reality Toolkit and Firefox Reality. And again, there's not many options of AR or Windows, macOS, or Linux. So if you want to get started right now, the best way is probably uh, an Oculus Quest 2 with the Oculus Browser for VR and an Android phone with AR Core and Chrome for AR. So, what is this being used for? Or what is being built? Many things are being built right now. There's just a few examples. Lots of games and entertainment. Some examples on the bottom left, there's Moon Rider, an open source game similar to Beat Saber, created by Super Medium, the maintainers of A-Frame. Uh, Troll Tower by Daniel Esteban, 
Construct Arcade has a whole set of cabinets to play user-created XR games. There's also space for artistic experiences that combine images, procedural generation, video streaming, web audio. There's a very active creative coding scene. On the top left, we have an example by Within, who have been building immersive experiences for years. Uh, what you don't know is an experience on the creative process of Matthew Deere. Also, advertising and campaigns for brands. Uh, on the bottom right, Lucian has an AR ad for a fictional sneakers campaign. And of course, education. Virtual visits to museums where you can interact with everything. Interactive, collaborative lessons with explorable diagrams and explanations. On the top right, Frame, uh, that lets you easily meet and create um, with others in private 3D spaces, is now focusing on virtual classrooms. More options for commerce. You can see objects close up before buying them without visiting the store. You can see customized versions of anything you want to purchase, place it in the world, place furniture in your house and see if the colors match. Play Canvas has uh, examples for AR furniture. Shopify supports the model viewer. Sketchfab is widely used. More cases uh, in this age, real estate companies and house hunters can usually benefit from virtual doors to houses. For productivity, all the collaboration, measurements, finding directions, create presentations, all kind of useful tools. There's Nifty Reality. It's a virtual reality space on the web that lets you run multiple 3D applications at the same time. Or Sodar by Google that uses WebXR to help visualize distance, social distancing guidelines in your environment. And of course, research uh, with uh, things like protein and molecule viewers, multidimensional data exploration and visualizations, AI agents training. For example, uh, at visualization in DeepMind, we use WebXR to be able to review agents in their training environment with metrics and analytics and even interact with them in AR and VR. But it's also about building the metaverse. Uh, the web enables connectivity and sharing, and so you can think as a potential explosion of content like GeoCities and Flash. We have examples like Dracosis, a 360 volumetric video by XR Social and X3 Engine. Lots of things happening in hubs. Fabien Beneteau shows live coding in a virtual room with multiple viewers as he streams while coding a light switch in a VR environment affecting a real world Internet of Things light bulb all happening in VR and over the internet. We've also seen multiple actors performing live from different cities in future stages on Mozilla Hubs, or we've seen Valencia James dancing over live stream volumetric video into Hubs. So things are coming soon, new features that are here but behind the flag, which means they will be soon available for everyone. An input model, module exposes the poses of hand skeleton joints, it can be used to render a hand model in VR scenarios, as well as perform gesture detection with the hands. It does not provide access to a full hand mesh. That's where the frameworks become important, as we said earlier. In the top image, you can see how 3GS supports hand tracking and rendering out of the box. And on the bottom image, uh, sign language detection by uh, HandDJS by Stewart Smith. Also, layers SDBI that brings uh, composition layers, which are useful for displaying information, text, video, or textures that are intended to be focal objects in your scene. Improves performance and battery life with enhanced visual fidelity. You can render images, stereo cube maps as backdrops, and more. On the right, you can see a preview of how Super Medium, a comic book and magazine, either for XR, uses layers to greatly improve fidelity and performance. In progress also are some really nice features. Depth sensing exposes information about the distance from the user's device to the real world geometry in the user's environment. You can see it in the first image by Maxim Smiljevs for Play Canvas. The digital rabbits are partly occluded by the physical table. This is huge for immersive AR since it gives better heat testing and object occlusion. Also, image tracking recognizes user-specified images in the environment and provides tracking information. In the center image, also by Maxims, you can see a cube and a digital book cover that are attached and tracked with a real book cover. Uh, lighting estimation that provides information for the renderer to improve shading, shadows, reflections, so content appears more natural and integrated. Brandon Jones shows us how the XR dinosaurs are integrated better in their environments using that new information. And also more things like access to the camera on top of the AR SDK. Uh, it will provide extra power to the user by applying computer vision or artificial intelligence to the feed.
like detecting hands or faces, which does not necessarily fall under the responsibilities of the AR layer. And finally, DOM2 VR. Similar to the DOM overlay for AR, VR developers, developers have long wanted to be able to use regular web content in their VR environments. This is very important because it will make much easier and seamless the integration of content with XR. And many more new features that are coming soon, not directly related to WebSR, but like in improving the ecosystem, like WebGPU, which is designed from the ground up to efficiently map to modern native GPU APIs. WebGPU is not related to WebGL, and it's meant to be its successor. In the future, it will be used to provide the render content to XR devices. Progressive Web Apps, PWS for short, are web applications that have been designed so they are capable, reliable, and installable. These three pillars transform them into an experience that feels like a platform-specific application. Bring this to VR and you'll be able to start web apps from within the shell like if they were native. And more adoption in the future, there's a bunch of new HMDs for both VR and AR coming up. New uses, new accessories, new features. In the image, you can see a promotional image of Facebook's Infinite Office, a set of tools to improve the virtual office experience. You can see how it's a browser and Visual Studio Code, which is built with web tech. And maybe the future will see more browser engines implementing WebXR. So talking about the future, what does the future hold? Uh, we know many brilliant, interesting things are being built, but what could it look like for any web user? Some of these ideas are, are just ideas. Some are being actively researched, and are even, or some are even developed as products as we speak. Maybe there can be a web of such simple and tangible things as 3D objects, which can be seen in VR or placed in AR with some hot areas or script buttons, which link to other similar objects. Sketchfab and Facebook photos have already showed us that it's a viable format. We may see a return of web rings where people place their content online and link it in a Gibson-esque way. An object can be a small cube, but it can also be a whole room, all shared and interconnected via the web. Another interesting thought, can the web core technology, HTML, grow to embrace XR? We saw HTML5 bring the standardizations of many new tags, which have enabled amazing experience that nowadays we take for granted. Same with CSS3. Can we look forward to a full valid markup supported by the browser to build XR experiences? And at the same time, we need a way to consume content that is not ready for VR or that doesn't need the third dimension in general, but it could benefit from it. Wikipedia is a 2D scrolling experience, but illustrations and graphs can be 3D and interactive, like read along an article as objects and projections we spy. We could find a way to build even smaller components than PWAs or turn PWAs into widgets that we can place around in our virtual space. Notes, calendars, videos, social feeds. We could consume a vast array of data with small adapters for all our web content. Could it be the return of microservices? Could it be the return of active channels or Yahoo pipes? Artvark, for instance, is an augmented reality layer that incorporates multiple applications or gadgets on top of existing VR worlds. And finally, stepping out of the page back into the browser, can a browser be an XR experience in itself? Can it transcend the 2D projected window and be a shell on its own? How would that work? Right now, we know in VR our whole view, our whole world has been replaced, rendered by the experience, and we have to go back to the shell to be sure we're safe. That's why there's no link traversal yet. A malicious site could try to imitate your shell and try to fish some confidential data. We've developed all these UI notions like the padlock for secure connection that live in the browser Chrome in the area outside of the page. Where do they live when in VR? When the page, the Chrome, the browser are not there. Is there a physical manifestation in the VR world? Is there a companion hovering near you that you can talk to, like an assistant? Will XR be interacted with mostly via voice? Some gestures could bring a safe bubble inside any VR experience where you know nothing can render on top of the browser, like a meditation gesture to move all the virtual content away and get out of the matrix. So of course, all this opens new questions for which we have very few solid answers. How do we deal with accessibility? Not only text readability and contrast factors, but how can a screen reader even work on VR or AR? Can we afford to make experiences that discourage visually impaired users or make a control or locomotion schema that can't be used by physically impaired users? 
or something as simple as making experiences that don't account for left-handed users or children. As we mentioned before, with the risk of traversing VR content, how do we tackle security? What patterns can we develop that make it secure and safe? Can we let kids go happily browsing with an HMD? More so, how do we bring forward the extensible web? Make sure that any developer can easily use all these components and extend them instead of using black boxes. These are all questions that need many people to work on them. The great thing of the web and WebXR is that many of these problems can be explored quite easily and the explorations get huge reach with little complication. So that's it. Go explore right now if you're interested. Head to immersivewebgithub.io and check it out. Start building anything your mind can come up with. Let's go build a future. Thank you.